we're going to try this again. I lower the, uh, the frame rate. Um, it doesn't look like so far that I have any real, uh, frame rate drops. So that's, that's kind of good. So, all right, let's see what happens with this. It's a few seconds ago over the last two minutes. Okay. It looks okay. You guys let me know in the chat. Let me know how it's looking for you. I'm really, really curious. Um, let me see how the... I'm, I'm checking everything out. So if you are just joining, then we're just testing this out. We're going to see how, uh, how things are looking on both uh, YouTube and on Facebook. Um, I'm switching over to YouTube right now. Okay, it actually looks better on YouTube. Let me go over to Facebook. Uh, let me see how this looks. So far, so good. I mean, it's not too horrible. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, okay, oh, it actually looks good on Facebook too. Okay. All right, sweet. I um I just had to change a couple settings, including the frame rate um and the bit rate. So we're, it's a slightly less resolution, but it seems to be okay. Um, the issue seems to be more with uh, less about the multi-streaming because I believe it's going out to a single service and then splitting off from there. Um, so I'm actually only streaming once, and then the service then splits it off. Um, I think that's how it works. <laughs> I'm not even sure anymore. But uh, I'm definitely, yeah. Hey, Daniel, what's up, man? Um, it looks better. Okay, awesome. Good. Good to know. That's the, good. <laughs> so tomorrow my ISB is sending a tech out. Uh, so hopefully we can get the um, uh, my upstream uh, bitrate to be where it should. I should be able to stream at about, oh, like that, at YouTube quality, which would be like at at youtube hd like at 1080p at 60. i should be able to do that uh with what i pay so it, I, like it cross cross fingers toes knock on wood and everything like that so i don't know we're, we're gonna see what happens yeah so mira what i did was i lowered my bit rate down to 3000 and decreased my uh my fps down to 30 instead of 60. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Adam, go to, um, let's see, if you go to uh, Facebook, uh, fb.com forward slash W Evendale, uh, W as in world, and you should be able to get something over there. So, yeah, I, it's, Daniel, I think the, um, the issue seems to be there that because it gets broken off into into separate, it may be sent out at the same time, but it doesn't mean that it's broadcast at the same time. The platform is going to be the one to broadcast, uh, providing that the signal is good, in theory. And I've seen multi-streams with other channels go off on, on, on with, with a delay on both. And I know that YouTube, uh, I can change the latency. Right now I have it on normal latency, which will put YouTube behind anything. I could put it down to low latency, but honestly, until I know that my my connection is solid, like rock solid, I'm not going to do that. And right now, I'm looking at like everything is golden on this side, so it looks like that we actually do have a stream. So that's that's kind of cool. Kind of happy about that. Um, okay, and I'm also going to be preparing the. Uh, the video for tonight at 8 p.m. I neglected to do that today. I've been working on a bunch of stuff to prepare for a multi-stream on YouTube and on Facebook. So, so far, so good. If you are watching on Facebook, I should, I should have a, uh, should be able to see the chat as well as the chat from YouTube on my screen. So if anybody is watching on Facebook, just let me know that you're here. Just drop a note into the chat. I want to see if it pops up. And you know what? Just in case it doesn't, I, I'm going to pull up uh, Facebook as well. I want to know who it is that's out here that's watching this. Uh, if you have time and whether or not this is something that we should be doing uh, more of in the future. Um, let's see. I see one person watching on Facebook. So that's cool. So if you are watching, drop it into, drop the comment into, into FB and let's see what's up. All right. 
Anyway, so I've been doing a little bit of work, and one of the things I've been working on is this particular region here in Tala, which is in southern Erenal. Um This is a... It's, it's, it's been fun. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. Because the main... Um, the hold on, one second. I gotta change a change a, a monitor over here. I had it like in portrait mode, and it just wasn't working for me the way that I I, I currently have other things set up. Uh, let me just change this, put this over here, do this, and clicky clicky. Let me see what's up here. Click that. Cool. All right, sweet. Now I can see all the things that I need to see. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. Really appreciate it. Yay. All right, cool. So if I look over there, oh, hey, why are people like chatting over my face? <laughs> See, this is why we conduct tests. This is, this, this is why. <laughs> uh, okay, let me, let me just change that really quick. Hold up. There we go. Bring this up here, maybe around here somewhere. There we go. All right, cool. I like being able to see the chat uh, uh, in the window as well. It definitely helps. All right, so I've been uh, checking out Tala and the rest of Edenal. My goal is to get as much of Edenal done as is possible. Uh, some of the problems that I've had in the past is trying to um, work on everything. And every single dot you see here on this map is its own symbol. And that means that there are tens of thousands of these symbols on this map and my computer's just chugging along when you're trying to design a high res map in um in on, on a single in this program wonder draft um with tens of thousands of symbols i was like you know what let me stop let me stop let me just let me just concentrate on one at a time and then i'll bring them all into photoshop and then i'll composite them to create a single world map a um, like a 4K version of that will then go up on Patreon as part of that pledge, and then a full res um, uh, poster map will then be published. So that's the goal. I want to get as much done as is possible. Um, hello, yes, I am trying to branch out, Daniel. And chats are merging. What is this madness, Minty? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Surprise around YouTube. Um, for you, you the. It is, yeah, Manuel. Uh, that is that is true. YouTube will be behind Facebook because I have normal latency on, and Facebook does not have that. So yes, they will be behind. But then again, if you're watching on both, then you're just being an extra. So don't worry about it. You're good, as long as it's getting out there. I am kind of. I mean, once my internet connection is solid, then I'll I'll try to stream as um, as as good as possible, or I'll try to stream as as close as possible on both streams for those people that uh, that enjoy that kind of thing um but we will see um caffeinated evening sparkles what's up hey it's good to see you guys over here this is this is cool yeah so if you are chatting on facebook and you are chatting on youtube i am able to see both of you all at the same time which is awesome i just love that that is just awesome why does it is it me or did facebook freeze no facebook did not freeze okay cool Alrighty, sweet. So yeah, uh, this is what I'm going to be working on uh, today. This is typically what I do on my Tuesday streams over on Twitch. Um, but today I had wanted to see if I can get out to YouTube and on Facebook, see if I can get uh, some more of this mapping done um, and just see where to go from there. But in the meantime, if you, are, if you like what you see, then you know what to do. Um, like and subscribe and blah, blah, blah. Alrighty, let's see what we have here. So there is, let me put this here. Is this downloadable now? Still preparing. Damn. I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the video from Twitch so that I can upload, uh, edit and upload on YouTube. But uh, Twitch is taking a sweet time right now. So I'm not too sure what's up. Anyway, let me drop this down. Take a look. Okay. Uh, this area down here, the Rama Plateau, this needs to be done. Yeah, Daniel, I'm kind of happy about that. I really like that there is, um, that the, the chats do merge on my end. Um, it really does allow me to, uh, keep in contact with everyone, which is just so freaking important. 
Um, and the Twitch community is just amazing. But, you know, we do have a YouTube channel and we do have a Facebook page. And quite frankly, for a long time, I feel like I've been ignoring the Facebook page. Um, I, I think, I mean, I haven't been, I mean, we do, you know, we set up events and other things like that, but that's not really, you know, that, 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 that's not really what's up. Um, hold on for one second. Why am I receiving? I'm supposed to be receiving a call from my ISP. So are they actually calling me right now? Who the hell is calling me? What's going on here? Um, oh, it is. Hold up. I'll be right back. One second. They're, they're, they're asking me via automated thing that <laughs> they're, they're confirming tomorrow's appointment, but they're letting me know that the problems may already be fixed. No, they're not. It's, it's, it's absolute BS. Hold on. Okay, I can hang up and I don't have to do anything and they'll still show up. All right. So, yeah, people are chatting in the YouTube stream, which is awesome. And, and I'm able to see it. I can see all of that. Like I see yours, I see Sparkle Sparkles. So that's interesting. I don't know what it is that you typed in, but it came up as three asterisks. Um, and when I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my chat window. So, um, I'm kind of curious of what it is. Yeah, we have an Automat too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, it was actually a good call because it's, I mean, it's kind of good in that they're kind of letting me know that the appointment is still on. It's annoying in that it's not resolved like they say it is. So, because it, it really does high quality. And, and I mean, you guys know I'm a stickler for the, for the quality of the stream. So I really do try to keep things... Uh, uh, really try to keep things on the on the pro level or as, as close to pro as possible. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, Daniel. Well, actually, there's a lot of things that are that missing on YouTube that uh, that we are so accustomed to having on Twitch. Um, the custom emojis for the channel, um, the ability to raid other channels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So sure, there are plenty of things there that are different. On the other hand, YouTube does allow a larger audience because of its recommended videos. Um, uh, for example, YouTube will keep track of. I mean, honestly, if you're going to stream on YouTube, then you have to understand how the algorithm works. Um, I'm just beginning to understand it myself, so I don't pretend to, to be an expert on it, nor do I pretend anything I am about to say is actually correct. But what I can tell you is, based on what I understand so far, the uh, the YouTube algorithm is going to take a look at you as a user providing your signed in and it's going to see whether or not you have um... hey Frank I just got a notice that you're watching man I just got your message dude what's up Frank it's awesome to have you here ladies and gentlemen I would like uh, typically on Wednesdays and on most other streams uh, during the actual play games over on Twitch, I read off all the Patreon patrons. Frank is the very first one who joined uh, early on when I set up a Patreon patronage to start off on, on all the maps and then it moved on to not only including the maps, any maps that I create, uh, but also to supporting all the streams and the creation of the world of Evendale and the creation of the world guide and the creation of the posters and the creation of, of, of graphics and everything. Frank was the first one to be there to support. So, Frank, thank you so much for always being there. And it is absolutely an amazing experience to have you here on this team. So, thank you so much for all your support over these years. Really, really appreciate it, my old friend. Uh, and quite frankly, I can't wait to see you again. I hope, I pray, Comic-Con opens back up, dude. I hope Comic-Con opens back up. I cannot wait to work it again. Ah! Ah, oh, it's annoying. And it was so much fun seeing you and your lovely uh, there um, all those years ago, dude. That was 2018. Can you believe that? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> hey, check this out. Um, by the way, 
if you uh, if you guys are up on YouTube and you see uh, Jaguars Den Games, um, you should be able to. Uh, I believe that's your channel, is it not, Frank? I believe that's your channel. If you can, you know, guys, go over there and go check that out. Um, uh, does a one? Okay. Oh, Daniel. Yeah, and they have a Twitch for a while, but this was better for them. Apparently, yeah, the YouTube YouTube is just a little bit better for a lot of people. Um, so speaking of Jaguar and Frank, since you are here and those of you down in South America, and I happen to know for a fact that there are a couple of you here that are doing that. Uh, thank you so much for liking. Um, we are in the area where such things would be, particularly in this little valley here. Um, and I'm going to double check some other areas on the map. If you see me looking in this direction, I'm looking at a master map, which was a highly detailed one that originally went out to the Patreon patrons. Uh, so this is the, if you're just joining, this is what I'm working on right now. So a little bit, a uh, little bit different, um, a li little bit more Uber world. This is just the continent. My hope is to get as much of this done as possible. And then, um, and then, uh, publish it. Uh, like actual publish, like as in poster prints and other things like that. So, and we're slowly getting there. Um, for those of you that have been, uh, since I'm streaming for the first time and, and like a real, uh, like in an official capacity as opposed to a test, um, I know several of you come from, you know, Corfe is not exactly South America because there is no, there, there's no real world correspondence to this. Like, for example, we may see that Eva Rie may be a little bit more the Anglo-Saxon. The reason for that is, is that this was the first country that was ever developed back in the seventies. It was, well, actually early eighties, I'm going to say 1984 or so. And so it's going to have a little bit of an Anglo-Saxon thing because back then I was heavy into like Tolkien. Um, and then as time passed, everything else just kind of got developed. Sta'abri is still tribal. It still has that sword and sandal Conan um, uh, uh, kind of feel, which was the original intent. But it has since changed to become so much more and really its own thing. Just as Mutvia still has a kind of an Eastern European feel, it also has changed a little bit and kind of become its own little spooky area there, which Aaron knows all about. Um, we have here the Slindari Kingdom, which quite frankly is, I, I, I suppose D&D &D, uh, folks, D&D um, &D and maybe even Pathfinder folks are probably going to say that this is the closest to the drought that you will get, and yet it's not. Um, it's That has the, 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 the Slin have gone way beyond. So, the point here being that there, while there are some real-world similarities, such as Tumbria being a little bit closer to like a Bavaria type of thing, um, Agil and Cordova are really their own animals. Agil is an equatorial region. Cordova, uh, definitely subtropical. Um, and you're going to see some, some things that we can relate to. And that's really what Evandel's about. Is this a dark... Or hope? Uh, the hope is to make it a dark fantasy world that everyone can relate to on some level. The point is to be able to tell a story in this world that's going to hit you here somewhere. And it is complete dark fantasy. I mean, this is that, that's one thing that over the years I've come to realize, and I didn't even know I was creating it as such. But the, the whole point here is, is that your characters should be able to go through a world that is so horrific that when you survive it, you feel it. And that's the intent, is for people to survive it. Um... So, or at least that, at least that's always kind of my hope. Um, I wouldn't exactly say everything is insurmountable, but I really think Korfa needs more love. Let's get this, let's get this up. Yeah, get this a little bit darker. I kind of want these woods. These tall trees here um, have no real world correspondence, but they are, I suppose, Sequoia. Uh, Sequoia? Um, Sequoia, is that even a thing? Um, these trees here are really responsible for the wood that makes up the Corfin uh, Navy and, and makes them just absolutely incredible. <laughs> Everyone loves them for you. <laughs> Needs more cowbell. <laughs> you need the map framed? Aaron, you're, you're going to have access to it. So, yeah. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Aaron, my laundry, Mira Smula. Hi, hello. 
Um, these are players from the Wednesday live stream games. So since I'm here up on YouTube and on Facebook, I'm kind of curious. Um, is it a timing issue? Do you got, are you even interested in, in live games? Um, what kind of content would you like to see on these platforms? Because I, I've had to face the reality of it. Uh, I, I'm, I, people are starting to request more and I kind of want to deliver. If this is something you guys want, then, you know, let's do it. Let, let's do it together. You help me, uh, produce it. Um, so many of you help, uh, help uh, are in effect executive producers of this. So what kind of content would you like to see on these channels? Like more map developing, more world building, etc. Um, I can tell you this, uh, the YouTube channel, uh, Fridays is not, not soon. It's, it's in the works, but I will announce it. There's going to be a 7th Age of Evendale game going on, but the system being played, whether it's D&D, &D, Pathfinder, etc., has yet to be determined because I'm looking for a system that will help us tell the story of a dystopian, post-apocalyptic, oppressive, um, future punk kind of thing. And that's exactly what the 7th Age is. It really is survival in a dystopian world in a um, against a massive uh, oppressive regime known as the Syndicate. So um, that will be on Friday nights. It will be up on YouTube. Wednesdays will continue to remain on Twitch. There is something new and special between Mira and I coming up on Mondays. Um, Thursdays tend to be my day off as well as Saturdays and Sundays, except for Sunday night because then I'm usually working on something having to do with Evandale. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, Daniel's like, more. Okay, well, you know, that, that's why I'm asking. I do want to find out. Minty, you want to play in this role so badly? That's get a DM, man. Get a DM or GM who's willing to do it. I will uh, always, 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 always support any DM or GM who wants to uh, who wants to RP in the setting, um, and, and help them uh, figure out stuff. But honestly, my job as a creator of a world setting is not to tell a GM or a DM how to do anything. It's, it's, I'm there to, to help support, to, ah, I don't want those mountains to be green. Stop. Um, honestly, my job is just to create a world. The job of a DM or a GM is to, is to be the one to tell the story within it and for them to own it. Um, like I have told this story a thousand times and Frank, you may know, uh, you may know who I'm talking about. I don't know if they want their name mentioned, so I'll, I will respect their privacy. Uh, but there was someone who did run a game in Evandale. And they were like, can I run a game in Evandale? I was like, yes, of course you can. But I said, but I have one rule. And they were like, oh, don't change anything. I was like, no, change all the things. Just make it yours. I want to be a player. <laughs> and that was it, man. And I was so, so, so happy that and so honored that somebody else would want to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's totally cool. Am I going to rebrand YouTube and Facebook to open the channel up to more settings and systems? Am um, I hoping to keep this Evandale related or at least touch on the same themes? Aaron, so um, anything that has the word Evandale on it is going to remain concentrating on the world setting. <coughs> to be completely transparent, it is meant to promote it. Uh, however, the other... Aaron, you... <laughs> so, there's something else in the works and it's another channel. Damn you! It is another channel, and it is a gaming channel, and it is not just about Evandale. As a matter of fact, it's more about a series of friends who have the ability to stream coming together and playing independent RPGs, um, usually of the horror spoopy kind, but uh, it's really, it's it's just a group of friends coming together, so it's more about the players. Um, it's, it's just, honestly, it's more about you and us hanging out. And simply enjoying the game, um, like drinking, eating, exactly what we miss, like what I miss in a in a live tabletop environment, which I sorely miss, and I cannot wait to do again with my old friends. I so want to do that, but uh, since it's a thing, you know, since the pandemic occurred, we all want it. So I I, I was like, you know what? I met some awesome awesome people who have filled a very special place in my heart and I want them to be in on so much um, and, I, and I'm beginning to realize how much I actually miss the friend component of gaming the actual socialization so 
a new channel is being created specifically for that in mind and uh, guest players and other things like that. Again, it's something that happens so much more frequently than it does on the Evandale channel because it is about friends coming together um, and simply enjoying the hobby. And it's so it's kind of more of a hobby promotion thing than anything else. Um, Aaron with the pointed questions. I may try to run a game in it, then I do need to do lots of reading. Minty, I'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, Evandale.com, you know, oddly... If you, 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 some of you may not know this. So, Evandale.com is, I'm the only person who maintains that website, which is why there's almost nothing on it. I mean, honestly, there, there's a good, good amount of stuff on it. But the real place that you want to go isn't even maintained by me. Over 600 pages is maintained by Caffeinated Viking on the, uh, on the World Settings Wiki. Over 600 pages. I know many of those pages. I believe many of those pages are placeholders waiting for more information. But every time a new NPC, every time a new town, everything that ever was created, mentioned, or stuff like that from what I understand, and I, and I know not everything is up there, which is kind of scary that there's 600 pages and yet not everything is up there. Go to evandale.fandom.com. Evandale.fandom.com. You're going to come across the wiki over there. There are synopses of um, uh, of of the actual play episodes. There is, and that's just a very minor, minuscule portion of it. Um, and a lot of the canon gets created in live games, as always. I seem to remember a game called Cast and Keep not too long ago, and you will find that right here. My friends who were in that campaign, here's where it is. Here's where it is. Walter! Walter! What's up? Talking about people who I miss and crave playing with. Absolutely, dude. How are you? It's see, I know I see you like maybe once or twice a year now, and it's so annoying. Because I want to hang out with you again, man. I want to play. So in case you guys don't know Walter from uh, who's currently in the YouTube chat. Uh, thank you so much for uh, posting the... Um, actually, Cap, you can just put down evandale.fandom.com. You don't even have to put in the rest. Um, yeah, evandale.fandom.com. Um, if um, if you guys don't know, Walter was a... Uh, well, let's just say he's been around for a while. He's one of the old school uh, Evandale gamers. And Walter, you may be able to see that the map has kind of developed a little bit here. Just, just, Just a little bit. Things have changed. Uh, Minty, I play in 5... Oh, you play in 5e. How would you adapt it? You just do. Yeah, seriously, you just do. Um, keep something in mind. While the, the majority of the information... Well, if there are any rules that are up on Evandale.com, <coughs> it's going to cater towards Pathfinder 2e. But the information that is there um, is really... You can carry it over. The ancestry is really where you're going to find a lot of problem in 5e because 5e does not have the same kind of uh, expansion as Paizo's Pathfinder 2e does. But that is something that I'm working on. And I can tell you that a D&D 5e game is in the works. So, and that will be streamed. Uh, whether that game is going to be on Twitch or YouTube, I've yet to see. I want to see how the community reception is on YouTube. Um, on Twitch, we have categories where you can stream to. I can stream to the Pathfinder category, to the Dungeons and Dragons category, or to the Tabletop RPGs category. And therefore, people who are interested in those categories can go there and see what is currently streaming. On YouTube, it really comes down to tags. You'd have to type in like a hashtag or something like that. And assuming that everyone uses, or most people, you kind of have to search through different tags because the tags are kind of arbitrary. You can type in whatever you want. So if I can type in D N D or D ampersand D or Dungeons and Dragons or just Dungeons or just etc. So it's kind of it's a little bit. Um, you have to know what the hell you're looking for, certainly. So yeah, uh, developed and different. It is Walter. Here are some slight differences. This was a country that was once known as Delaran. It is now known as Withtriel. This is the land of the elves. Nothing else has changed. The reason why the name has changed, because I looked back in time, I found some of the old maps, and I found when I named that country uh, and redeveloped it from its original country, which is neither here nor there, I realized I had been playing World of Warcraft. 
and somehow Dalaran had stuck in my head, and you know how much of a stickler I am for originality. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to... I, I don't ever want to be accused, whether correctly or incorrectly. Um, I'd much rather own up to any kind of any kind of mistakes and then change the name. So I changed it to with Taril, which is actually the Elven name of that place. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kyria is still a county, if you will, of Ivari. It is no longer called Iviria. Um, it's now changed to Ivari. Um, I was I noticed I started naming a lot of countries. Uh, with the IA ending, and that is such an Earth thing. So I didn't want that. Like Tumbria, it used to be Nudvria, Mutvia, Tumbria, and and it's a, and and Aviria. And I wanted a little bit disparity to show the disparity of people, or disparity to show the diversity of the uh, of all the people that live in this area. You feel that so far, YouTube is proving to open up your circle to some long time. It does, Aaron, and some some very like loved friends too. That's the beautiful part about all of this, you know. That's that's absolutely a beautiful part. I'm I'm like I'm seeing old people here. Sparkle's saying that you're a big fan of Draw and On, dude. Draw and On has gotten so much love recently in terms of development, and the map here just doesn't show it all. What I really need to do is just kind of like. It, it's, I mean, it's like you're looking down at a barren wasteland, and so there's not going to be too much detail there of a barren wasteland, but Draenon is a horrific, horrific place, and I kind of want to change up some of the, like, at least kind of give it blemishes and blotches to make it a little bit more interesting, because right now it's just kind of like, hi, I'm Draenon, and I'm tan. So, Walter, this is an interesting little tidbit here. Draenon does, in fact, have a green patch of land as a carryover from the old days when it used to be known as Lirani, the, 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 the fields of green, a very verdant, if not the most verdant place in all of Erenal, the continent of Erenal. Um, yeah, you want to see a diesel punk at bay? Adam, that's, again, that's going to be Seventh Age. And the beautiful part about the Seventh Age is depending upon where in it you play or whatever you as a, as a storyteller, DM, GM, what have you, want to do with the world, um, you will be able to, you know, just do whatever. I could tell you that the seventh age that I'm planning on, on telling a story in is going to be quite different. Um, it's oppressed. It is awful. It is just going to be horrific. Um, Walter, you may remember if you're still here with us. And for those of you that had watched, uh, Chronicles on Twitch, or even uh, the uh, the VODs on YouTube, um, you may recognize something that was known as um, the Creed of Star. The Creed of Star with its high priest, Prian. That was featured as part of a uh, Rebels of Rasic episodes, or uh, Rebels of Rasic story. That area is right in here. And in fact, that's it right there, Kath Gorin. This is the keep of the Creed of Star. So, Walter, all this stuff is finally making it on the map. It's awesome. I'm so happy. So, yeah, it's, it's totally cool. Mike! Hey, what's up? Nice world map. Uh, you do stop by occasionally. Check out what's going on with Evandale. What's up, dude? Laura. Uh, oh, man. Yay. Thank you so much for popping in here, bro. Really, really appreciate it. I know, Walter, right? <laughs> yeah, Moldev is called out. Check this out, man. If you come in here to Moldeb, actually, there is something that's missing here. I need to put this in here. Hold on. I have to put this in here because it is particular to somebody. Let me let me get it in here really quick. One moment. Um, hold on. I'm looking for the proper symbol to pop in here in the map. Uh, this actually has to do with your old character in the Mutvia LARP. If you guys don't know, back in 2016 to 2018, we had a LARP. Walter was a huge part in uh, uh, in helping run it, uh, not only as a uh, as a marshal within it, but also as a developer and other things like that. So he does hold a special place, as do many of you. I'm still looking for a particular symbol here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I really, Aaron, to your earlier point, I really do feel like I'm getting a... I'm kind of getting like a reunion vibe here, and it's it's so cool. 
Let's put this here. Um, and let me put down the proper scale. Yeah. This is just going to sit right about mm, there. We're just going to leave it right there. So, <laughs> you always wanted to do LARPing. Uh, but in here, there's none of that. Yeah. Oh, really? No LARPing in Argentina? Oh, that sucks. That's like Little Raccoon. I love the name. Cool stream. Hey, what's up? Mike's friend. What's up? How are you? Yeah, you uh, you don't stop by occasionally to check it out, but it seems really cool. <laughs> so tonight, hopefully at 8 p.m. in about three hours or so, there's going to be another um, another episode of uh, Crossroads, an actual play of Pathfinder 2E. But as usual, we kind of say screw the rules and we go with the story. So if you're into that kind of thing, it should be there. And let me just check if it was downloaded. It was downloaded. Yay. That means I can edit and then post. Sweet. Um, you know what? Actually, let me see if I can export it up to... Yeah, you know what? Let me see if I can export it up to YouTube right now. One second. Because I have a feeling with the... With stuff being the way it is on YouTube, okay, it's gonna go up there right now. Um, it'll be private, but uh, and then I just have to set it up for publishing at 8 p.m. So it's not gonna be as edited as it usually is. I'll try to do what I can, um, but YouTube editor usually takes a little while. So I'm gonna put it up there. Anyhow, um, yeah, if you're into into world development, world building, and stuff like that, I love talking to people who enjoy that. Anybody that enjoys uh, stories. Um, digital art and other things like that. We have an entire community up on Discord, so whether or not you even watch the streams, dude, you know, pop in. We love talking to gamers, artists, and everything else. There's a fan art community now for Evandale, which is just mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. So, um, but yeah, the concentration's always been on story and roleplay, and I have to say, the... Walter, um, you may recognize some faces from from the LARP you may re and from other games that, uh, that you played in. So it's 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 all really cool, man. It's things have been happening and it's really, really good. Um, yeah, remember to like it in the YouTube stream, says Adam. Thank you so much for, for announcing that. Yeah, you'll be able to catch up though with the Wednesday session. Absolutely. Uh, hey, Matt, hey, it's Raccoon's friend. <laughs> That's awesome, man. You guys <laughs> You guys are oh Frank, you bummed that you missed the LARP. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um Yeah, Matt. Uh I, I like how it's like, hey, this is Laura, this is this is Mike. Hi, this is Mike's friend. Hi, this is <laughs> I pray I love that, man. That's awesome. Um I'm gonna try doing a a lot of uh, more and more streams up on YouTube as I'm beginning to realize that is just where um, where some of our community is. Um, it's not been a community that we have tapped into, not not out of a lack of love, certainly not. It's just not been something that I've had the time to do. With the pandemic, it, you know, it's a scramble as, as people get laid off from work and other things like that. You kind of want to um, get some stuff done and you know see what you can do. And then I found out that Streaming, while never was the streaming for for life, <laughs> you know, streaming for streaming to live, while that's never been a, uh, a a goal, it turns out that that is, and the pandemic has also given me the opportunity to work on voiceover and other things like that. So um, it's been an incredible change, and I kind of hope that you guys are able to uh, to come along with us to uh, to be on. Uh, to be a part of that change, to help us uh, to grow together and, and just become a community. Um, Bronson in the other room. Is that Steve? <laughs> Bronson! Hi, little buddy. What's doing, my man? Oh, man. That kid. He, he like he grabs my heartstrings so bad. So... Um, there's a lot of stuff that that's going on here. Oh my God. I'm just seeing how much of you guys are actually chatting. Um, this is awesome. This is awesome. It is awesome. It's so nice to have, uh, to have landmarks on there now. Yeah. Uh, 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 Walter, this has been something, dude, I, you know what? Hold on. Let me say this for a second. Cause I'm going to show you the full expanse of this. Hold on guys. 
because traditionally all of the games have been taking place right here on this continent of Edenal. But Walter, you'll see that new land and ice caps and other stuff like that have started to occur. Let me let me bring up everything. This is I'm I'm I, I've been fortunate enough to have an incredible community wanting to see this, and um, it's sometimes I get so distracted by the chat that I don't get done what I want to do during the stream, and so I, I begin to I continue to develop offline, and a part of that development has been the addition of so much more. I mean. The world of Evendale is now a full size, is now a full blown planet, and this continent here has yet to be developed uh, with any great degree. This one, as you can see, has started to uh, be developed. There are uh, characters that now come from uh, that, that now come from here. Um, uh, Yutomankini is a beautiful country, uh, also a subtropical. Well, actually, that's more of an equatorial or subtropical region. Um, that's, that's one of the few places where you're actually going to see living volcanoes, which as you know, Walter and others who have gamed in this, in the setting, it, it just was never a thing. So yeah, the world has actually grown. Um, Walter, you're going to notice that these three islands here while on the other map have been given a name of Swara, of Stra, Rath, Stra, Wathra. I am only the creator. I don't, I can't pronounce these things. And also another country by the name of Lakthel. Lakthel is where the Tengu come from, and Svavathra, this area here, is where um, cat folk, or known as the Firaf in Evendale, come from. Um, we're also going to see that this island nation down here is brand new, and for those of you that, that remember the horror story that was uh, the Rebels of Rasik, uh, that that's what took place there. You can already see the evidence that uh, streaming on YouTube is incredibly beneficial and in building the audience. Yeah, I mean, 14 viewers on an on an impromptu uh, stream is is absolutely wonderful. Is there something in the South and North Pole? Yes, there is. <laughs> there is something there in the South and North Pole. Um, what exactly is there is not something that I can really go into because I don't want to marry myself to it. In the past, I've spent a lot of time just uh, just talking about stuff, forgetting to write it down, because half the time I make all this crap up in the, in while I'm saying it. And um, the, I, I just like sitting around a table and 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 talking about it. Um, that has caused me to hold on. I just want to make sure I'm still streaming. Uh, let me let me change this really quick. Um, okay, there we go. Um, I have to make sure that all the music that I play here is copyright free, you know, so and sometimes something else will slip in courtesy of Spotify. So I have to change. Uh, but yeah, in the it, just like around the campaign table, when one of Walters or, or, or Frank's or any anybody's character, just like in the live games, uh, the actual play uh, streams, um, anytime a player comes out and says, hey, you know, what can you tell me about this area? Um, or what can you tell me about this town or something like that? I have to create a name and, and all that. And many times, I mean, I've kind of gotten, since my days of tabletop GMing, things have changed. I'm, I'm much more prepared, I could tell you that. And if you just take a look at all of these names that are on here now, just to give you an example, um, I have to write everything down. And it's like streaming live games has caused me to really become much more organized than I ever have been. So it's good that these things happen. Um, but sometimes I still forget to put crap down. So now I'm starting to design in advance and actually prepare for games as opposed to just kind of pulling it out, out of my butt. Um, Jason, hey, what's up? You would never have known about them even if not for YouTube. Really? That's good to know. It is, uh, it is an Elder Tar, Adam, up there in the polls, down there in the polls. It is an Elder Tar, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of have to leave it unspoken. I'll leave it at that. So, 
<laughs> Tony, and that's why I have Cap. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Cap is like, Cap, man, you're just, I mean, it's it's amazing. So in case you guys don't know who Caffeinated Viking is, he's been a heavy-duty moderator um, and one of the first over on the Twitch channels. He's now coming over here as a mod for the YouTube channel and what have you, along with Svartha Maya and others. Um, Cap is the one who's been, uh, who just said one day, hey, I'm going to create a wiki, and I just kind of went, bro. It's like, no, that, that kind of crap doesn't happen to me. <laughs> it's, that that should never happen. But Caffeinated liked it, so he just started doing it, and he's been awesome at it. Absolutely just just, just incredible. Um, your entire homebrew world is contained entirely within brain space. Oh, Daniel, right? So thank God that there are uh, sites out there like Obsidian Portal, um, World Anvil, um, I mean, Lone Wolf, which produces Hero Lab and Hero Lab Online, used to produce Realmworks, which was totally an offline like app that you had to run and you had to be on a local network in order, to, in order for players to see any of it. Um, so they kind of screwed the pooch on the development of that and they weren't really, they weren't looking down the horizon for that. But that too was also great in order to be able to keep, uh, keep, your, can uh, to keep your campaign. The best thing I could tell you, man, if you don't do it now, oh, here it is. Ah, hold on. If you don't do it now, if you are running a homebrew world, may I recommend something that looks like this? Hold on, let me switch over to a different view. So, this is a log of every single game, and I have this log broken up into the individual character stats. This little, this little section here is for the, uh, it's for the Twitch stream. Um, if bits and cheers and other things like that start coming in and then a hype train kicks off, bonuses can then be given out to the PC. So I do keep track of it there. So ignore that if you're going to be too, doing tabletop. In here are the uh, the very saving throws. Uh, because I'm playing Pathfinder 2E, it's Fortitude, Reflex, and Will. If this were D&D, uh, like 5E, you would just have like your normal save throws, your abilities, uh, your ability save. And then... Again, for Pathfinder 2E, Perception, uh, Stealth, and then any miscellaneous thing that might apply to that character. But when it comes down to world building, this is the, the most valuable part right here, this little section. So what I do is I keep a drive document open, a Google Drive, it's free, and you can totally do it. And then before the game, I take a look at the last sessions sheet. And if I wrote down anything in this section, that's going to stick, and that includes town names, NPC names, small little details. If I'm doing a voice for a particular character, and I need to write down, okay, that's low, it's gravelly, it's in the back of the throat, little things like that that help keep the consistency alive. And then well, I take, I pull out the sheet from the last game, then I go to the, I just create a new sheet for the new game coming up, put in the title, the date, whatever it is that you need to do to identify it. And then I carry that information more permanent into this area. This way, I always have what I did in the past now in front of me. Um, and that alone allows me to put everything into a single three-ring binder. I mean, this thing is like, this was gifted to me by the amazing Laurel Yankee Girl. And um, all, of the, all of the games and all of that information is now in here. And after a while, just take a day off, spend time with your world, go through everything and put it all in one place up on a wiki, up on a website or something like that. And before you know it, you will have a fully fleshed out world that is even more fleshed out than what you currently created. No matter how big it is, it can always be bigger. Chip, we're learning today. <laughs> Yeah, this is all, it's, it's, it's all cool. It's all cool. So Daniel's saying that you're up on World Anvil, which really helps you getting everything started and uh, getting the info out to your players. You just haven't updated things there. The only thing I didn't, so I had the Sage uh, subscription, which I think was like the, the, the top of the line subscription that you can have over there, courtesy of the, of, um, of Evandale's Benefactors. And the thing I noticed about it was it was fantastic. It was absolutely great. It was perfect. It also put everything into a space where two things can happen. One, plagiarism. Two, a wiki started. A freaking wiki started. This amazing person by the name of Caffeinated created a freaking wiki that was so much more updated than anything I could ever do. And so... 
I ended up taking it down for that main reason. It was uh, the the wiki just was so much better than anything I could have done because it caffeinated its work, you know. And it seemed like I needed to update the website. I needed to update uh, the, uh, World Anvil. I needed to update other offline documents and other things like that. And it was just like I'm not getting anything done because every time I said something, it was changed. Uh, three or four times in other locations and therefore slowed uh, slowed everything down. Um, just like how I used to develop uh, maps in Photoshop. Oh, that's a little bit too much there. Um, just like how I used to update uh, things in Photoshop. Um, I don't anymore. Uh, or update maps. It just, it, it took me away from from the actual purpose of uh, of of creating in on in that app um to get it out to the world and it was just slow so i start using the tools that allow me to develop uh, more quickly and at, at a sacrifice of a personalized touch because world i mean while this is great and i have personalized the palette and other things like that i could still do much do much more to it um you know in the end it's like it's going to look like any other one to draft map well, maybe not, but it kind of has that that vibe. So it's a thing. Since watching the seventh day stream uh, last week or earlier this week, you definitely got back into doing world building. That is fantastic, Daniel. I am so happy to hear that. The I I have been inspired by awesome, awesome people that I've been fortunate enough to meet. People who are pros in the industry, um, in in both uh, gaming and in VO and. Holy cow! I'm I cannot believe that somebody would also be so inspired. So thank you for that compliment. But more appropriately, I'm I'm happy that you found, regardless of who did it, I'm happy that you found some kind of inspiration to go back out there and and develop and develop that 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 no doubt incredible world that you have. And I want to see it more and more. Feel free to drop a link if you can. Yeah, and now you're role building the hell out of that donut shaped world. Manuel, you've got to. So, Adam, um, if you guys don't know Manuel, we know him as Adam Generator uh, up on Discord and on the Twitch side of things. Um, Adam, you have to give a name to the world <laughs> so we can just call it by its actual name. <laughs> that would be awesome if you did that. I need a little bit more green. Oh, man. Malach. Walter, I don't know if you're still watching, man, but Adam is so excited. I know. I kind of want to see this. So what he's talking about, it, it is a donut-shaped world. Um, he's been talking about it up on the Discord server, which anybody can join. It's totally free. Come on in. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome community. Like, I've never seen a community this size without clicks. I don't know how we did it. I don't know how they do it. They're just amazing human beings that are up there. Incredibly diverse. So welcoming. They, It's like people want to to talk to other people there. And not just about, it's, the community is actually not about Evandale. Evandale kind of broke off into two into two things. And I sent out a poll um, as to what Evandale meant to people. And it's like, the majority of them said community. In second place, it was a, it was a dark fantasy role, uh, a dark fantasy campaign setting. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Like and sometimes you create things you don't know where it's gonna go, man. And it's just it's just like, can can you tell them happy? <laughs> it's just so cool, so cool. Come on, you. I'm looking for where the hell's my symbol? I'm looking for my symbol set that, I, that I'm missing here. Um, <coughs> love you, Dan. Best space mom. <laughs> Wait, is that Daniel or Danielle? Or does it matter? Or or should I just call you Dan? You tell me how you want to be called because this is you and I will go with whatever your identity is. This way when I see your name somewhere. It's a boot. Tony. It's a boot connected with the peoples. <laughs> oh, man. Aaron is like, Dan, if you need players for anything, I volunteer as tribute. Put me in coach. I want to play. Oh, can I join Aaron on that? 
I want to join Aaron on that. If you if you play something, I want to play with you. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Aaron. Oh, gotcha. That's Woodsy. Gotcha. Dan Daniel or Woodsy. Perfect. Oh, hence the last name. <gasps> Connections. See? All the magic is starting to happen because of the miracle that is uh, streaming on other platforms. Or hey you. <laughs> Oh God, I got chills from uh, from just saying that. There was a uh, commercial um, uh, that I did some VO for. Uh, it was for a commercial reel, and in there, the character is like, "Dear Safe Auto, my employee," and the blah blah blah. And you know, this guy's like a like you can just totally picture him in like a in a three piece suit. You know, like slightly heavy set. He's got a cigar and his hair is slicked back. He never evolved out of the power ties of the 80s and what have you and um yeah at the end of it uh what does he say he goes let's say uh what did you say here um er, i just or hey you um he's talking about how since his employee got this insurance from this insurance company for which the commercial is um his employee has changed he's more punctual he's this he's that he's blah 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 and he goes, and I've even stopped calling him Hey You. <laughs> Jesus, dude. It just kind of reminded me, and I, for some odd reason, felt the need to tell all of you about that. Because that's what I do. Over on Twitch, there's a counter. They hit exclamation point rabbit hole. And it's how many times I start talking about things that have nothing to do with anything. I feel called out by myself. So that's kind of a thing. Hey, Walter, man, if you're still watching, remember Pundesh? It's still here. Finally getting stuff up here, too. Why can't I grab this damn thing? I need to. Come on. Man, I dropped this thing here, but I can't. Don't know why this isn't working. Pundesh, let's see. There we go. There's the label. Pundesh. Boom. There we are. Are you allowed to start with your dad joke? Oh, Matthew. Yes. Well, my friend, you can always do whatever the hell you want. Jason. Uh, oh, I see people here hyping up others. This is great. See, this is this is actually what the community is all about. By the way, is anybody... Uh, hold up. Um, Frank, ask the questions in... Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, Frank, ask the questions... Uh, because I, I don't... I, I very rarely will actually take, uh, check Messenger... So ask the questions in the chat here, and this way everyone gets it. But um, Frank is asking questions offline. Um, oh, it won't let you comment. Why the hell's not letting you comment? Are you signed in? That is so weird. That is so weird. Okay, so Frank would like to know if there is a different Latino or Latina place than Majadal. Majadal is actually not a Latino or Latina place. Um, not in the sense of a uh, of a culture or um, or anything like that. I suppose the real world correlations is going to be. I mean, it honestly depends upon what what specifically of that that you are looking for. Uh, if you are looking for like a Central American uh, vibe with like um, uh, a Central American or South American vibe, whether you're looking for like a Mayan or an Incan. Uh, type of feel to it or something pre or post those eras you're going to find that in a lot of different places so just to give you guys an idea here let me save this i'll switch over to the other world map which i happen to have a real world over and you'll be able to see the tropical regions a lot easier and uh, then i will give you guys a little bit of correlation hold on our maps are saving now uh, okay this is gonna go here Alrighty. By the way, uh, tonight's episode that's going to premiere on YouTube, I'm not going to set it as a premiere. Instead, I'm just going to have it go live at 8. And the reason for that is, if it is a premiere, it's going to be the same thing as as watching it live. And that means that you can't fast forward through intermission. You're going to have a 10-minute countdown that you have to wait for in the, in the uh, um, in, um, before the game starts and all that other crap. So instead, it's going to be... A, I'm going to set it not as a premiere, 
just a go ahead and watch it. This way you'll be able to fast forward because I did not edit it. It will be edited. And then and it'll be that one which will be edited. Um, as opposed to me taking it down and then putting an edited version up. Okay, so here we are. If you take a look here, here's the glorious regions known as Central and South America, and or Northern South America. You take a look at these regions here, and what you are looking at is this whole area right here is like Northern Africa and what have you. The equator comes in in Northern Ajil. This is the equatorial region all here. And this area here is the subtropical uh, deserts and what have you. Um, so if you are talking about areas within the world of Evendale that have a Central American or South American uh, flair, then what you are looking at is going to be anywhere from, let's see, this area right in here. This is known as Teshu. With the, oh, you know what? Let me switch over to the big, the big E thing. Here we go. All right, guys. Um... This area here is known as Teshu. It is within Mutvia, and yet it lacks some of the Mutvian uh, horror. You're going to find uh, jungles and whatnot in here. Fire Horse is huge into that, as well as Iron Boar, Sky Horse, and even some elements of Cinderfoot. Of course, if you're looking for something on more barren wastelands and drier lands than, than an absolute high-level horror, Dra'anan. If you want something more of a fantasy bent and also jungle, you're going to be looking down into southern with Taril. Um, Tumbria, while Bavarian and Flair, you're going to see all in the southwestern portions of it. You're going to see up there in the hills uh, as well as over by the mountains to the east. You're going to start getting some of that vibe as well. But certainly, Agil, Korfa, you're going to get some. Um, in, here in the continent of Majadal, you're actually looking at Non-human races. This is where you're going to see a lot of the... What the hell is that swath? What is this swath of gray? I need to fix that. Um, you're going to see some areas in here that really don't have a lot of elves, humans, dwarves, halflings. Instead, there are centaur... Um, uh, oh, geez. There's all sorts of things in this area. And all of this area. I mean, look at this beautiful swath going straight across. Right here is the equator of this particular plant. It's actually right here. And so all of that is this incredible jungle area. Um, Locked Fell. This is the this island down here is the main area where the Tengu come from. However, they've also claimed these uh, these lands. Well, up there in the hills, or uh, excuse me, up there in the mountains, certainly you're going to see some of that, but you're going to see the majority of that of those portions of the civilization, of like jungle-based civilizations, um, Amazonian rainforest uh, type of civs, you're going to find a lot of that also within the peninsula of Loch Thel, which this, quite frankly, as far as um, as far as weather goes, is going to be a lot more like the Yucatan Peninsula or Central America in general. Um, yeah, looking for more of those cultural influences. I don't borrow... He See, here's something that you may like, Frank. I do not borrow heavily from the real world anymore. I'm thankful that I've had enough time with, um, uh, with gamers like yourself where I can develop Evendell and have its own cultures and own civilizations. But I certainly understand, because I know you personally, I certainly understand where a lot of your pull is. Um, so, if having said that, there is, no matter how much detail I put in here, it will never be complete. And therefore, I highly encourage you to claim an area, say, this is mine, Steve, what can you tell me about it? So, you've asked that question, let me give you some stuff. You are looking down here in this area, uh, in the southern spine. Dwarves still claim this area. However, you're going to find an oppressed people by some of those dwarves. Uh, they are holdovers from the old Talon regimes. That And Talon, uh, over the years, has kind of weakened, with the exception of Pundesh. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a thing. You're going to find some of that there. This area here is ripe about what you're talking about. There are, on the, on the high-res map... Um, you're going to see some ancient ruins and other things in here. People still live in that area. There's also a campaign which is taking place, which takes place... If I could find it. Yeah. It takes place over here. Over here. Not that the players of that campaign know anything about it. Know where it is in the world. 
But over here, uh, there is something that is a heavy, heavy, heavy jungle environment. Um, it's a story of, um, in a way, um, you can play one of two factions in this particular area. I mean, look how large this area is as compared to the world. But um, over here, for some reason, colonists decide to come in here. And, and you can play one of two factions. You can play the colonists coming in, or you can play the, uh, uh, the indigenous people. And so if you like that kind of story or conflict that kind of mirrors the real world, you can have that here. But this entire area, Ra'aik, all of this, or uh, Ra'aik, all of this area here, you're going to find a lot of that. Um, you're going to find totemic, uh, shamanistic, um, atavistic, atavistic, animistic, um, faiths, practices, cultures, and civilizations all throughout this area. This area is very similar to it but they are kind of the indigenous people of this land and they are almost insectoid. Well, not almost, they are kind of insectoid. Um, the Vicrids. So that's that. And if you guys happen to like some pirate type stuff, the Catchadoon Islands are gonna be your call. Have I ever considered making a historical based campaign like the one set in medieval Europe or the Levant? No, or the Levant. No, Levant or Levant. You know, this is how horrible I am with that kind of stuff. No. Um, the reason for that is, is that I absolutely suck in history. I know a couple of things about Northern Europe during the Viking Age, but that's about it. Um, and much of, my, much of my concentration has been on the creation of fantasy. I think other people can honestly do a much better job in holding um, campaigns that are set in historical uh, times. Um, when you say that people either chuckle up, oh, 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 I'm missing stuff here. Also, a part of your theme setting is the concept of identity and its world that has lost its own identity. So I always feel appropriate not thinking of a name. Oh, okay. All right, that, that's totally, yeah, that's actually a very good reason, man. I, I like that. That's really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Jason Grove, you mad, man. You, you will love. It's, you know, Jason, it's a, uh, again, the community up on Discord is, is incredible, and then it extends out to the various platforms. So, yeah, that, that's kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let me just make sure that, okay, cool. And I, I, again, I always have to check the music. Uh, let's see here. We're going to see either chuckle uncomfortably or try five minutes later. They're always surprised when I respond. Hey, you being shouted across the room. Woodsy, I'm going to call you Woodsy. I, I, give the, I, I understand that. Uh, hey, man, if you like it, I'll call you. I'll call you. Hey, you. <laughs> yes, you're looking for more of the cultural influences if there are any. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to find that area down here really uh, what you're looking for there, Frank. Um, and because I have to, I mean, look, my my own create my my mind wants to wants to dash around from here to there and and everywhere else. But the reality is is that I have to get something done in my lifetime. Um, and once Edenal is released, which was the purpose of tonight's stream is to work more and more on this so that I can get it done. Um, release that and all, and then begin working on Majadal uh, Hardcore. Then uh, then once Majadal is done, move over to the third continent and the final continent, and then be done with the entire planet. This planet. I'm not done. There's, uh, in the Crossroads campaign, it was mentioned due to the backstory of another character that was there. Um, that there is another planet, and that is where the gnomes and all the others uh, come from. Um, in Paizo world, they may call it uh, the first world, uh, the one that in, in Paizo speak, they created a, uh, the, the gods, created an area where they would test out the colors and whatnot of the world first, and that became kind of like the Fey Realm, the first world. I don't have that in mind. I have many different exoplanets. If you guys like science, this is then you'll understand what I'm talking about. So that's kind of a thing. I'm looking for a symbol here for Pundesh, and I'm not stalling. I'm, I'm looking for a particular symbol here that I'm going to slap down on the map. Oh, thanks for dropping the link there. Here for cultural consultant support if you need it. Yes, Frank, you and I shall talk, my friend. Oh, you and I are going to talk. I would absolutely love that. 
like yeah hundred percent in fact this needs to go there not that other one um yes because it is not something that i know and majadal for me is going to be really a test of incorporating cultures i am why well, there's one thing that i will say it, it it the historical accuracy of something the historical accuracy and related to the real world is not my goal absolutely not my goal is to create something that is going to cater to a type of story and one of the things that does not exist in quantity in Evendale is a, let me click, nope, it could be a little bit bigger than that. One of the things that does not yet exist in Evendale is a, a notion of a people outside of Druids, but that's like a class, you know, a, a, an actual ethnic group that is closely tied to the original elements of the land. There is, um, we come up here, and when I say that, I'm, when I say the original elements, I mean that they're, hey, what are you doing? No, you're not allowed to do that. Stop that. Pundesh, you're being naughty. All right, let me uh, come up here to stop brief. My God, this place is huge. Okay. I did forget, yeah. Fire horse, iron boar, sky horse, blood hawk, you, up oh, here you go. This area here, a little bit northern, bronze talon. This is something you're going to find. I'm going to butcher the name, so I ask for forgiveness in, in advance. In this area, you're going to see, in the Bronze Talon area, um, you're going to see something akin to Feathered Serpent. I, I want to say Quetzalcoatl, but I know I'm mispronouncing it, or at least I believe I am. Um, you're going to find some elements of it there, but it's not because I borrowed from it. It's more that Bronze Talon is harnessing an element one of the uh, one of the eight elements of evendale that is really a a different vibe than anywhere else they they take a look at it as more the animals are the gods and that it is the animal world that contains a lot of the elements um and they seek to personify deific power or deity like powers or the elemental powers stop is kind of all about the elements they kind of go with the uh, with the gods um, they kind of have their own little thing going on. Bronze Talon is another region. I did forget about them. Um, River Elk. I don't think that there's an exact correlation, but I think the closest that you're going to find there is probably the indigenous people of North America. Um, probably them. And Ice Bear is almost a... I mean... Ice Bear would it be indigenous people of like, you know, the northern, like Northern Germania or something like that. But th this is more, uh, or um, even like ancient Scandinavia, but before it became Scandinavia, um, you're looking at like pre year 800 real world. Oh, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the Vendel from 13th Warrior is probably the closest that you're going to get. Look, I love that cheesy ass movie. Just don't look at it for, for historical knowledge, because it's awful. Um, I mean, where druids are technically a class that can easily be... They can... Well, yes, in, in a way, Daniel. I suppose that druids can be an ethnic group, but the way that the game mechanics are structured is really what I'm referring to. The story behind them, the, in, in, a world, in a worldly context, 100%, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can say that all of these people are um they they harness uh are attracted to wield or worship however you choose to to tell that tale um the primal energies of the world and yeah i suppose that you can then go down into that and say that they're shamans or everyone is a druid certainly you can have something that is like that 100 percent 13th warrior the fire snake i saw the fire snake there it was coming down it was horrible or whatever it was so yeah it's kind of a thing deb hey what's up deb oh man Eden. um evandale is so rich with its own history that everything can be historical fiction uh in a way yeah i just yeah <laughs> hey caffeinated speaking of i have some more lore for you when it comes down to the drosti of mutvia i have some more stuff for you um 
So, <laughs> so yeah, this is this is awesome. I'm just having you guys here. I'm really, 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 really happy about it. Kind of curious. Do we have anybody that is? Uh, who who do we have in the, in the in the Facebook fam? Okay, currently only one person watching there. All right. Wow, Facebook is really behind. Holy cow, Facebook is really behind. I'm just taking a look how far behind we are. Where is it on YouTube? Oh, wow. There is significant lag. I think. I can't tell. Actually, I think YouTube is now really, really caught up. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, it's... It, wow, okay, so both streams are actually really behind. Okay, anyway. Um... I'm going to stop just for a second. Let me check the status of the upload uh, for tonight's Crossroads Adventure. Which, by the way, no no, no spoilers. Um, it was pretty freaking heavy duty. Okay. The Harbinger. Crossroads Session 21 is currently being uploaded. But let me see what's up. Processing. All right, cool. Let me just uh, let, let me set this thing up. Pending visibility is going to be public. Set as an instant premiere. What is that? Uh, when you uh, you and you are going to watch it together at the same time. Okay, well everyone can do that. I'm going to set it down on schedule at 8 p.m. So we have it. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. where are you? This is so much fun. I'm. I, I'm absolutely loving seeing some some old faces here. Time zone. Come on, stop. Stop. Schedule. Damn you. It's oh I have to set it for eight PM. There we go. Sorry guys. I don't mean to do this with you while uh, uh while you're watching me just do something that you can't see. Do this, set it for this. No man, this is for the sixteenth. There we go. Done. Save that. Upload this thumbnail. I'm setting it up for tonight, so we have this. Uh, there we go. Playlist is going to be Crossroads. Blah. Done. Yeah. Save. And then I'll put up the, uh, the Witcher McCallus later. Okay, cool. There we go. All right. Let me check the chat here. Um, dual modding. <laughs> Are you dual modding? That's That's awesome. Uh, YouTube was originally almost a minute behind. Yeah, I don't know where it is right now. Um, Dan, why am I not streaming on Twitch? So here's why, Dan. This is That's actually a really good question. So on Twitch, we are an affiliate, which allows me to monetize things. Twitch, however, the the affiliate agreement, as well as the partner agreement, you can have two, uh, two levels of agreements with them. Um, I don't know much about partner because we're not that. But affiliate, you are not allowed to stream directly on Twitch and another service at the same time. Furthermore, any live content that you recorded on Twitch or streamed to Twitch cannot be posted anywhere else for another 24 hours after you started that stream. So that's why Wednesday games appear on Friday nights, not on Thursday nights, because I want it to start earlier and I can't do that. We start at 8.30 Eastern, and I can't post it at 8 p.m. Eastern, a half an hour earlier, though 24 hours later, or 23 and a half hours later. So binding, uh, so I am bound by the contracts. Um, but my reason for not streaming to Twitch is because I had wanted to establish both the YouTube and the uh, and the Facebook communities. Um, a seventh age, futuristic, post-apoc, kind of punkish type of game will also be taking place on Friday nights, and that will be streamed to both of these services. So I am checking that out. In other words, Evandel is expanding. Um, and the, and a lot of that has to do with you amazing people making that possible. So there you go. And I believe I have a solution for that. If the, uh, the, the quality of the streams will be affected temporarily until I can get onto a service like Restream.io, which to do what I want it to do, it's going to cost a, a good chunk of change. So if we can build up our, re our viewership before we hit a major... Um, uh, before we release a, a campaign, a brand new campaign, 
then I might be able to actually afford a service like uh, like Restream and have a better quality stream. So I'm kind of getting things, kind of getting the ball rolling, if you will. I hope you don't mind. I love the Twitch community. Don't, don't get me wrong. And we will continue doing that. Crossroads and other content will be uh, will be out there. Okay, let me come back to this. Alrighty. Go back to my main map here. Here we go. Um, okay. So, over here we've got a nice little thing. Um, you're brand new and you apologize if this is annoying. What is Evidel? Tristan! Not annoying at all. Not annoying at all. Um, Evendale is a dark fantasy campaign setting. I actually have to rest my glasses, so your question comes, or rest my eyes. Question comes at a perfect time. Evendale is a dark fantasy setting that was created for role-playing games, both tabletop and live action. Um, Evendale was originally created as a way for me to have a place where I was accepted as a kid. And as you can probably tell by looking at me, I'm not exactly young. I've been, uh, uh, Evandale is, I want to say for the better part of 40 years has been now developed and I never published it. It's never been written down all in one place because when I did have it all written down in one place, it was destroyed, um, early on and I stopped developing for a long time. But for the past 20 years, there have been, it has been a major push in its development and now there's a wiki. There are, there's a whole candle series that somebody else is doing that I'm not even related to. Um, there's merch and it's just weird. Is it, Evandale is weird, but if you ask the the community, Evandale is also a community. I put out a poll on Facebook not too long ago, and I was like, "Hey, what exactly does Evandale mean to you?" Um, and on Discord, and it was asked or it was answered. It's a community of gamers, artists, hobbyists, etc. And then you have a fantasy setting. Um, as far as a setting that kind of makes it stand out from others. You know, I don't know if I can answer that. I'm kind of biased. As the creator of it, I don't really have a good answer for you on that. I mean, there are some originally some Tolkien inspirations. If we come all the way up here, this this area here was originally developed in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, back then it was known as the Viriol, and then it became a Viria, and now it's Ivari. Um, this area here was developed in the uh, early 90s. This area here was developed uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, Slendery is really within the past 10 years or so. Uh, Kultrek and this whole area here has been developed now. Uh, Malatala and all of this has been going on for like the past 15 years. Uh, Krak Ferek, uh, known as the Spine of the World, is the Dwarven Realm. Um, that's been... Oh look, another follower. Thank you so much for following. <laughs> that, that caught me by surprise, man. That was, you are the first person, uh, or excuse me, oh, oh, they followed on Twitch. Okay, that was a Twitch follower that we got here. <laughs> that was weird. Um, so, <laughs> that was awesome. Um, that, the, the, uh, the, the sound alert kind of caught me off guard there. I wasn't expecting you to hear that. <laughs> so, in answer to your question, Evandel is both a community as well as a dark fantasy setting, and you are only looking at one continent of an entire planet. Um, the, ma the map is actually so um, GPU intensive that I can only work on a small portion of it at a time. So, there you go. I hope that answers your question. And besides, Feel free to answer or to ask anything, because quite frankly, that's how this world gets developed. Because if I don't know, I'll be forced to make it up. So, I hope that answers. <laughs> wow, somebody just subbed over there. That's amazing. Yay, thank you so much for the sub if you're able to listen here. Really, really appreciate it. Hydrate, oh my God. Um, Dan, the... Uh, <laughs> um, Dan, um, how's the uh, the GoFundMe coming? That, okay, so I know what you're referring to, and that was to see if I can actually uh, create the book or the novel of it, the, the actual one of the stories that can take place. It takes place in modern times. It gets a throwback to Evandale. Um, I've decided to work on one project at a time so I can get shit done, and the very first part of it is going to be this. And if I, if I drop the F-bomb every now and then, that's what I do, and, and sincerely, no, I mean... I will almost always drop it unapologetically because my intent is never to actually upset anybody, but I, t I like to curse. Um, I want to get this done first. 
And when I get this done, then I'll be able to uh, concentrate on the release of other materials, supplemental materials, including the ancestry slash race guide. And uh, once all that's done, then I will be able to kick back in my golden years and, uh, and publish a novel. And I, I will tell you this much, the outline for it and let me see. I'm trying to think of how much info I want to release. I can tell the outline for the for a three-part series has already been created. And once I find myself in the groove of constantly creating and I can keep to a schedule, then I will start up a GoFundMe as per the request of some of you. Because you you all are just mind-bogglingly amazing. I just don't get it. I, I honestly don't get it. And that that's I mean, so many of you have uh, allowed this to just continue, and I I can't even be thankful enough. So, uh, let me get this up here. Yes, boom, that goes there. And this is going to come down here. Whoa, hold up. I need to check the... Nope, nope. Let me bring this up. I have to change the music again. Hold on. Let's go to some lo-fi beats. Hold up. Let's do this. What do we got? Yeah, this is from Harris Heller uh, from, their al uh, from his album Insomnia, part of Stream Beats. Sign up for <laughs> what software am I using? Tristan, this uh, this software here is Wonderdraft. You can find it at I believe Wonderdraft.com. Um, it is put out by Megasplut. Um, all of these maps. Oh, you are Auric. Thank you. Wow, Tristan. Thank Tristan. You subbed on Twitch. Uh, thank you. That is. Freaking amazing! And you're you're you've never come across this before. Alrighty, Tristan and everyone else. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, this is this is for anyone that is new. Uh, my name is Steve Kraus. I'm a professional storyteller at Renaissance Fairs. Uh, that's actually what I do. There is a I have a Viking village over at the New York Renaissance Fair, and I live close to that. Um, for the past 40 years, I've been also a game designer. Uh, well, I should say more a world setting designer. I'm not a game designer and, um, and a GM. I've never done it professionally before, but I have always been doing it as a hobby. And what ended up being three or four different versions oh, look, of the world. Another follower. Oh my God, you guys are fucking amazing. Um, what ended up initially being four or five different versions of the world has finally settled in to be the world of Evendale. So what is Evendale? Okay, here we go. You know what? Screw it. Let me, let me give you some treatment. Hi, I'm back. Okay. If you were to take our real world Big Bang in that from a point of almost nothing or really all a possibility condensed down to a very fine point and from there it exploded, you will find the origins of Evendell. There was a point in time when nothing and all things had existed. This was known as the Tirsar. The Tirsar, these proto-deity dreamers of all possibility, I mean, anything from flying horses to what have you, all existed in the dreams of the Tirsar, and yet they were not even aware that they were awake. In a flash of a moment, something known as the Tirsarig, the dreams of the Tirsar, had come forth from it, and from them, a first deity, one known as Rishtledal, the messenger, the carrier of the dreams of the Tirsar. From them, other gods had begun to develop, some of them parted ways with others, and soon enough, all the deities that we know of today within Evendell came to exist. However, we have also learned, being inhabitants of the world of Evendell, that the 41 or so gods that we currently know of is really just a small faction of reality. 
At some point down the line, these deities had all come together, each of them a very tiny and yet incredibly well-defined fragment of reality, would start carrying out some of the dreams of the Tirsar. These carriers of the dreams would become known as the Adrahar. And there the Adrahar then developed one of them by the name of Dranathis. Dranathis was a deity of physical of a of a of physical reality. Those things that we understand about physical reality came and went in an instant because stability was not yet dreamt of by the Tirsar. And so with a first version, if you will, a version 1.0 or an alpha testing of it, created the uh, the concept of a physical reality was now implanted in the Tessarian dreams. And from there, a new one came about after stability had been dreamt of. With stability now a possibility, physical reality then came alive again in a new deity by the name of Scythlia. And mind you, all of these names are names that mortals have given these deities. It's hard to even think of the true concept of deity in Evendale because they don't half the time even know that they exist. They come out as almost pre-programmed. And in fact, one could say that because of a possibility now exists, that possibility is personified in deity. Scythlia had created over the course of several billion years a material universe in all of the tangential planes, and thus were born the eight elements of Evendale, starting at the top and then opposing down below and then all the way through, sun and moon, not the planetary bodies, but mere the symbols that mortals would come to attribute to the powers that exist within these elements, sun, moon, air, earth, fire, water, void, and spirit. You may know them as a D&D player, a Pathfinder player, as the realm of the elemental plane of fire, or of earth, or of air, or of water. But now I would also give you four new elements that come within Evendale that also bring, or at least other things can be used, um, that are incorporated into other things within Scythlia's realms of existence. The, the concept of void and spirit may be thought of as a negative plane and a positive plane of energy, while that of sun and moon are the secrets and the truths behind the existence of all things. These realities then uh, Scythlia wielded and, and wove and created these things. However, the physical universe was not only created by Scythlia, Scythlia had also created assistants, if you will, those known as the Dregen, not dragons, but Dregen, D-R-E-G apostrophe N. These beings made up of space and time began to push and to weave in metaphorical senses all oh, of look, the known another follower. All of the known universes. Universes. Because again, this physical reality, that which we call the prime material, if you're if you're going like uh, uh, like old school uh, gamer. Or the primate or the or the material plane, other realms began to exist. These dragon assisted in the creation of all things because Scythlia, being a deity of physical realms, was only a physical being, and therefore limited in its capacity to do anything. Nonetheless, Scythlia and the dragon ended up creating all the worlds, and this one here one of trillions of possibilities and planets, this one here came to be known as Evendale by those who would come to live on it. Scythlia went ahead and had uh, used the infinite divine energy to weave life into things, and it first took any all of these eight elements and imbued them with life, and they became known as the Elementals. However, Scythlia was not pleased with this, seeing the elementals themselves as incredibly narrow focused as I am fire and that is it not even truly having a voice Scythia then touched one of those elementals from each of those elements and from them came the elemental fey a completely new construct one that had never existed before but not quite autonomous Caught somewhere in between what you may call fairies or the fey and the elements the elemental fey were a little bit more of a personification of an element, and yet they were still incredibly narrow-minded. Scythlia once again touched and therefore forced the evolution of the elemental fae to become the fae themselves. But all of this had not yet taken place on Evendale. 
but instead one of the myriad worlds contained within Sithlia's infinite universe. And so the evolution of the creatures had begun. But Sithlia was created in such a fashion by Sithlia's own dreams, unbeknownst to Sithlia, to have two arms, two legs, horns, a tail, and eyes that look this way and skin that looks that. And Sithlia's world began to be occupied by various types of beings. Soon enough, we began to see things uh, come to life, and yet everything was alive. Death did not exist. Therefore, no creature ate. Everything instead subsisted on the divine energy, the infinite rapture that is Sithlia. All of life radiated from Sithlia, and therefore even walking on a blade of grass would not kill it. And soon enough, creatures came around. From the Fae themselves, Sithlia then created the very first of the Evan uh, those that we consider the Evandale Elves. When I say Elves, there are many different kinds of, in Evandale. The very first of one is called the Adraha, uh, the, um, uh, the Adra... Why can't I? The Adra... Oh my God. The Adra Eel. <laughs> the Adra Eel, fangs and facial hair, very primal. They were the first of the beings created by and with the element of Earth. They are tied very much so. From there, something opposite it was created, those of the air. And then all the way around until we have the elves that we know of today. The desert and the desert dwelling and never evil Miradil. Beings that seem to have a slight metallic sheen to their skin, but also of the elven ancestries. Then we also have the uh, the Ferenil, the Farseer Elves, those with slightly wider eyes that look like saucers. They are said to be able to look into things that none others can see. Then you also have, um, oh man, uh, geez. I mean, go to evandale.com forward slash ancestries. You'll be able to see all them because I want to get to the story. After all the elves had been created, other races were then created. Uh, we have the dwarves, we have the halflings, we have all these others, gnomes and other things like that. But all this occurred on multiple planets. And here on this, why, are we frozen? Am, am I frozen? Hold on. I believe it's frozen. Is it frozen? Oh my God, hold on. Okay, one second here, guys. Ah, what happened? Um, okay, guys, one second. I have to, I don't, this has been happening every now and then, and I'm not sure why, but this is a portion of Streamlabs that's doing it. Let me see if I could change it to something else really quick. One second. Nope. Can't. Hold on. Oh, man. All right. You guys can still hear me though, right? <laughs> Anybody want to text over to just enjoy the show? Yeah, I'm trying. Um, I'm trying to get this back. One second. One second. Hold on. I don't know if this is going to do it or not. I don't know if you can still hear me or what. Let me see what's up. Oh, come on. This thing is... Uh. Come on. Which of these is it? There we go. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Hold on. <laughs> 